Before we move on to the video, if you are looking for more lease study material, please do not hesitate to contact me on my email and on my LinkedIn. In addition to the material, I have also developed a file in which I have put all the credit categories with their respective names, adaptations to which they apply, their description, their details, furthermore required documentations, formulas, and the standards they follow in a tabular form and color coded. And all the important terminologies related to that credit categories are stated below. Feel free to contact me and I'll be more than happy to share all with you. Water efficiency, 11 points for all adaptations for school and retail, 12 points. Now why LEED focuses on water efficiency? Every day, clean water is required for drinking, food production, and energy generation. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, 355 billion gallons of fresh water was withdrawn each day in the United States in 2010 for various uses, including power generation, agriculture, and public use. The water efficiency category focuses on the conservation of potable water for indoor and outdoor water use as well as the uses for non-potable and alternative water resources in context of water conservation and creative use for LEED projects. As per EPA, water efficiency is the smart use of water resources through water saving technologies and simple steps. This is the table that shows the number of prerequisites and credits. And if you can see that there is a corresponding credit for a prerequisite, there is outdoor water use reduction prerequisite, and there is a credit outdoor water use reduction, and similarly for indoor water use reduction and building level water metering. So we'll go one by one, and let's see it in a bit more detail. Prerequisite one, outdoor water use reduction. The intent requirement is kind of similar to reduce water consumption for irrigation purposes. Just a small a reminder here that rainwater management is covered in sustainable size, so we're not going to discuss about the rainwater here, only the other sources. There are two options to fulfill the requirement. Option one is if you're able to show that you have designed a landscape where you require no permanent irrigation system, you will fulfill not even the prerequisite, but also the credit. The second option is to reduce water use. And you have to show that you have reduced at least 30% from the baseline. Now, the baseline has to be calculated. In U.S., it can be done by a water sense water budget tool, and there is a downloadable spreadsheet for others. There are certain ways uh, which you can apply to reduce uh, the irrigation water use. One could be the plant species. You can use drought-resistant plants or the plants that naturally use less water or require less water. There is plant density and irrigation system could be smarter or you can use, for example, drip irrigation system. So irrigation system, plant species, density are a few ways that you can achieve uh, water use reduction. Zero lot lines uh, projects are exempted. We know zero lot lines where property boundary is almost the same as lead project boundary. For the documentation, you need to show a site plan showing the location and area of landscape and the report from water sense budget tool calculator now in order to uh, put values inside this water sense budget uh, water budget tool you need to submit an area of landscape and you should not consider uh, or not put non-vegetated areas if you have hardscape any path along inside uh, your irrigation area it has to be taken out from the calculation credit number one Outdoor water use reduction, two points for all adaptation except for healthcare. Intent requirement, option number one, exactly similar as uh, PR1. For option number two, the prerequisite or mandatory was 30% and you can start gaining some points if you show reduction of at least 50% by uh, some techniques called zeriscaping, which is the process of landscaping or gardening that reduces or eliminates the need for supplemental water from irrigation. So this is a technique that you can use. You can use the plant density technique to reduce the plant density. Weather-based irrigation controllers, which can grant you even 50% reduction automatically. You can use smart irrigation system, drip irrigation system, uh, or there is one uh, other way that is you can use another non-potable water supply. It could be rainwater harvested, or it could be any other source of water that you have collected but in that case, you have to show that salinity, salinity and storage for peak time 
is considered. There is, there, it should not be harmful for the plants in terms of salinity and it should be enough storage uh, for uh, the peak watering month. For the documentation, monthly supply of alternative source of water in case of non-potable and it has to be calculated and smart irrigation controller calculations if you are using them. Uh, if you reduce by 50%, you're going to uh, earn one point and for 100%, if you're able to do that, for example, you can it's not you are eliminating the use. You can make it 100% uh, reduction by using completely non-potable water supply. And in that case, you can earn two points. But for healthcare, it's only one. Prerequisite number two, intent requirement. All similar to reduce indoor water use. Building water use is uh, water used by toilet, urinal, lavatories, etc. Appliance water use is the dishwashers, laundry equipment, etc. Process water use could be if you have a cooling tower, etc. This table shows the baseline water consumption of fixtures and fittings. We have fixed and fitting on one side, and then you have two standard values uh, based on IP units and SI. You can you have to remember them, but either one of them. It's up to you because both of them will be shown in the exam. From this baseline values, you have to show a 20% reduction in order to fulfill the requirement of this prerequisite. If you have a water sense label fixture, it automatically qualifies because it is ver uh, verified by a third party that these fixtures use 20% less than uh, the baseline values. And the point to note here is that prerequisite deals only with the efficiency of fixture. There are more ways to reduce uh, the indoor water use and we'll be looking at them in the credit. These tables show the standards for appliances and for building processes. You might notice that in retail, school, and hospitality projects, you might have, or in fact, you have more usage of appliances than any other office or commercial project. Two ways to show compliance. The first one is straightforward. When all installed fixtures on your project are below water sense maximum level. We have just seen that water sense is uh, third party certified that it uses 20% less water than the baseline. So if you have water sense label on your fixture or you use a fixture that uses below water sense maximum level, you fulfill the uh, prerequisite requirement. Path number two is usage based calculation. You have to uh, uh, combine all the usage of the fixtures and then see if it is less than the 20% water usage calculator by USGBC. If you recall, it's kind of similar by uh, of light pollution reduction where you had bug rate, uh, rating method and calculation method. If one of the fixtures or few fixtures cannot comply with the, uh, with the standards, then you can show that all of them when combined are below that uh, are using 20% less than the calculator by USGBC. For core and shell, since they have empty spaces, so we will only consider or submit uh, the fixtures that are installed on the project. Now for path number one, simple and straightforward, just the data sheet of plumbing fixtures and appliances and you are done because it's already showing that it is below water sense maximum level. For the second one, usage based calculation, you have to show that fixtures in aggregate are fulfilling the intent. So necessary calculations for all applicable, fix, uh, applicable fixtures, process water and appliances should be submitted. Might be uh, a little far stretch, but this is the only way in this case. Now there are some exemptions. Water using equipment related to human consumption, coffee ma making machines, commercial kitchen sinks or soda machines, ice machines, they can be excluded from the, not even from the prerequisite, but also from the credit requirements. CR2 indoor water use reduction 1 to 6 points for all adaptation and in the credit you can consider using the alternative water sources. The techniques are to use water efficient plumbing fixtures and to use gray water for toilets and urinals. This is the alternative water source we are talking about. So what is gray water? Any water used, uh, used water coming from washing machines, dishwashers, sink and showers will be considered as gray water but here we cannot consider uh, kitchen sinks because there are so many substances going down the drain of the kitchen that it does not qualify for gray water. So you can use gray water for a toilets and urinals flushing system and you can have an on-site 
uh, wastewater treatment facility that can uh, treat the wastewater up to the tertiary required standards and then you can reuse this water and uh, it will help in further reduction of potable water use. Uh, now based on this table you're going to gain the number of points starting from 25 percent will give you one point in BD plus C and uh, the other adaptations up till 50 percent. Now we just discussed in PR2 that healthcare, school, retail, and hospitality projects may have more water use in appliances and processed water. So, if these projects can show some reduction or significant reduction in uh, appliance and processed water only, they can gain one or two points based on these reductions. These are the techniques that we just discussed. You can use dual flush toilets. I'm sure everybody has seen that one button releases less amount of water, the other one more. Gray water we use is using public lavatory. We just discussed this. Uh, lavatory water to pump in the WCs for uh, flushing purposes and on-site water treatment that can, that can treat the water to the tertiary standards and then you can reuse this water. To document all uh, the indoor water use reduction techniques, you can submit the data sheets of fixtures and appliances that shows that less amount of water than the, pre, uh, than the standards is used. And if you use any alternative source of water, water source calculations, and if you are using it for uh, the flushing of toilets, then the plumbing system design should be submitted and alternative water narrative should be submitted. There is uh, a chance of exemplary performance of one point. Uh, if you remember, the, the sheet shows up to 50% reduction and you can gain six points in BD plus C. So if you show more than 55% uh, reduction, you can earn an exemplary performance of one point. Prerequisite number three, building level water metering. The intent is to identify additional water saving opportunities by tracking water level consumption. As per the saying, you cannot improve or you cannot measure. So the requirement is to install water meters that measure the potable water use, including makeup water meter for cooling tower. If you have any, if you have the cooling tower facility, then you should have makeup water meter for your project. And in case the meters are not accessible, they are deep inside or there is a restriction, you can track with the monthly bills. But the attributes for the meters should be that they should be permanent, monthly and annual summaries should be available and there should be an owner commitment to share five years of water usage with USCBC. And to document all this is to submit a, dec a declaration and proof of shared commitment via USCBC proof data template. You can submit also the photos of the meet meters just like one of them is shown here. Credit number three, water metering one point. Inter similar to building level water metering. Requirement is a bit more stringent and in detail. You have to install permanent water meters for two or more of the systems. Now you are submetering your systems if you have any. The main supply, the main potable water supply is metered in the prerequisite and the submeters are installed on the systems. Now if you have irrigation system, indoor plumbing fixtures uh, as a separate system, domestic hot water and other processed water, they can be submetered about for about 80% of their uses. But if you have a sub-metering uh, system or you want to meter uh, the system of boiler water and reclaimed water, their meters should record 100% of the usage. I've, I've highlighted this uh, specifically because I remember I saw this uh, question on my exam. We just saw that healthcare, school, hospitality projects, they, they have more use in appliance and process water use. So for healthcare, additional water meters in any five of the following is required. Purified water system, filter backlash water, water and dietary, laundry lab, surgical suit, etc. You will not find all these in other adaptations. So this is specific for healthcare facility. Now for the documentation to submit for the water metering, you should provide water metering strategy narrative for documentation, submeter locations, submeter, you can submit their photos or their maps and the usage that you have recorded uh, for the the use of uh, water in these subsystems. Credit number four, cooling tower water use, one to two points for all adaptations, and of course, when your project has a cooling tower. So the intent is to conserve potable water used for cooling tower makeup without negatively impacting the condenser system. Now, how can you negatively impact 
if you are trying to offset the potable water use and you, you reuse the same water again and again to a point where the minerals become so concentrated that it starts harming the system. So you have to uh, be careful about that. Now, the requirement is to conduct one-time potable water analysis using the cooling tower makeup, measuring these five control parameters, which you can see below in the table, which has the maximum level given as well. Based on this analysis, you calculate that how many cycles you can do uh, without exceeding this maximum level. The cycles of concentration, which I just mentioned here, the definition is number of times that a volume of water can circulate through a cooling tower system. As we said that we do not have to impact the, the condenser water system negatively. So after our analysis, we can find out that how many times we can reuse this water. If you are able to show that you are reaching 10 number of cycles without exceeding the five controlling parameter limits we just saw, you will gain one point. And if you are reaching the uh, 10 minimum cycles and 20% of the water that you use there is coming from a non-potable water source, you will gain two points for that. Non-potable could be water condensate, harvested rainwater, gray water, which we, which we just saw that we can use in urinal and toilet flushing, uh, runoff from ground. But here, the water that you are going to use for cooling tower makeup has to have a certain standard. Even for the potable water, we use a one-time analysis to see the concentration of those five uh, factors. So we have to treat the water up to this, up to certain standard. And we have to select from the non-potable water sources the, the one that needs least treatment. For the wa water condensate uh, from the AC system, uh, it needs minimum treatment anyhow. For the others, there is a contaminant or uh, there is a chance that they would be contaminated on their way uh, before collection. Now for the documentation, uh, you need to submit the water uh, analysis that you did for those five uh, factors and the calculation for uh, the cycles of concentration. In case you're using for two points uh, non-potable supply, uh, the calculation and analysis for non-potable water treatment should be submitted. This sums up uh, the water efficiency credit category. Uh, thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.